Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Super Time JB, and you know, really, what happened the other day? I was sitting at home eating a bowl of cereal when an earthquake happened out of nowhere and scared the crap out of me. That was such a weird moment. I mean, come on! Who the heck eats Cheerios? That earthquake occurring was pretty weird, though. Thankfully, it only lasted a few seconds. But I remember my final words in those last few seconds were Why can't I pull a Kurumi in this game? Have you ever wanted to go on a date with someone, but the only thing you put on your dating profile was, I play video games? Well, if that's the case, I hope one of those games you play was Daylight Spirit Pledge, because man, this game will teach you everything you need to know to get a date. Now, for those of you that are unaware what this even is, this is a mobile game revolving around the popular anime series Date Alive. This anime was about a guy named Shido going on dates with these girls with insane powers. These girls are called spirits, and they tend to cause earthquakes, unless they are stabilized. And how do you stabilize them? You show them a lot of love. So, here's the thing, I couldn't afford a present for you this year, but don't worry. I found this penny on the street the other day, and you know what? Pennies are good luck, so I want you to have it. For real though, in this anime, Shido takes the spirits on dates to stabilize their powers, and when he kisses them, they are set free. Yeah, it may sound like a weird series, and it is, but it's still an enjoyable anime nonetheless. So they made a game about it. Well, technically a few games, but... Today we're going to be focusing on Data Live Spirit Pledge. This game came out late 2020, so yeah, I'm a little late to the party, but then again, this video was supposed to come out early 2021, then got cancelled. And now I'm bringing it back, because Kurumi wanted me to, so let's check it out. Let me just say this, off the bat, this game had a lot of updates to go through, and it took a while before I was finally able to start playing. Man, what is with mobile games and slow updates, like every time I open up the game, it's updating again! What, they need to patch Kurumi's dress or something? And like all anime mobile games, this one also has an anime style intro. It plays the main theme in the series and everything looks good and sounds great too. I mean, I can't play the song because of copyright, but I can't play something else over top of it. The game also has a second intro, and basically plays the plot of the anime. We get to learn about what happened in Shido's life that led him to this very moment. But none of that really matters, because in this game, you start from the very beginning. So, basically the story mode in this game starts from episode 1 of the anime, where Shido finds Toka. And we're actually thrown into our first battle right away, with Toka fighting off Origami and the AST, which stands for Anti-Spirit Team, in case anybody out there was wondering. So at this point, the game turns us to ropes on how to play. The game plays like a hack and slash side scrolling RPG. You can move across the stage using the left circle, you can dodge your enemies using this dash button, and you have multiple different attack buttons to choose from. Each attack varies depending on what character you use, but most of the time, you're going to be using this big button in the bottom right. This is your basic attack button, and you can spam like there's no tomorrow. Compare this to Team Battles and Sonic Heroes, and they're literally the exact same thing. The biggest downside to this attack is that it's not very strong, so if you're taking on a more powerful foe, you'll probably want to stop mashing this button and try some other attacks. The other three attacks you have are definitely stronger, but once you use them, they have a short cooldown, and you have to wait for a few seconds before you can use it again. And then there's the special attack button. Once it's ready, you can use it and you'll wipe out enemy forces like there's no tomorrow. Just make sure you don't miss, or else you'll probably cry harder than Yoshino. <laughs> the enemies you fight are mostly members of the AST, and yeah, I know what you're thinking, did Lil Yoshino just kill all those women? Yes. Yes, she did. Cause she's secretly evil. Okay, well, turns out they just retreat. Which is definitely a safer option. Don't want that age rating to get too high now. Now let's admire some naked women. The enemies can be a tad stupid in this game, considering sometimes they just kinda stand there and wait to die. Guess life in the AST must really be hard on them. I will give the enemy forces credit though, they can actually deal a decent amount of damage on you, if they get the chance. Some of them have swords and some of them have guns, so you have to be careful. There's also some helpful items you can pick up on the battlefield that will help give buffs to your attack power or defense, so make sure to pick those up. Now this game's story mode is very similar to the anime. There's several chapters to play through, and each chapter revolves around a certain girl. You start things off with Toka, like in the anime, then go Yoshino, Kurumi, Katori, the twins, Miku, etc. 
And yeah, if you've seen all three seasons in the anime, then you'll already know what happens in each chapter. Yeah, I kinda wish this game had more of an original storyline instead of just copying the anime. What's with games based on anime and doing this crap? Come on people, we've seen the show already, give us a new storyline! As stated earlier, each character's chapter revolves around portions of the anime. I don't want to go too into the details in the story, but I will say this, having a chapter focusing on a different character every time is a pretty smart move. It keeps things from becoming too repetitive. Each chapter has several stages to play through, with some bonus stages added to. Depending on how good or poorly you perform, you can get 1, 2, or 3 star rankings. The higher your ranking, the more XP you get. You can also change the difficulty. It's automatically set to normal, but you can play it in hard mode and in hell mode. Why is there not a heaven mode? I'll never know. Each mission has three objectives you can complete to make sure you get that three star ranking. And before you jump into battle, you can customize your team how you see fit. You get to choose the team captain, unless the character is automatically in your party for the story, and you have two more allies and someone who assists you in battle. You can also switch between characters in the party during battle by tapping the character icons. And if your character dies, you'll automatically switch to the next character in your party. And after each battle, each party member will receive some XP and get some bonus stuff to it, like money, gems, spento, etc. The battles tend to usually last around three waves of enemies, and after a few battles, you're treated to a nice little cutscene where you can make choices on what to say to each of the girls throughout the chapters. Now I can finally tell Origami how much I hate seeing her in a maid outfit! So then she poisons the drink she made for me. Come on girl, what'd I do?! Also something to keep in mind is that you have to unlock each chapter and be at a certain level in order to play through it. And yeah, this does kind of suck that I can't just jump into Miku's story immediately, but it does make sense every chapter gets harder and harder as you play on, so I doubt your level 1 Toka will want to fight a level 50 Natsumi. It's like those cringy ads you see online, but just replace it with data live characters. That's pretty much all I had to say about the story slash battle mode in this game, so let's check out the other modes in this game. The next mode in this game I want to talk about is the dating mode. In this mode, you can take your girls out on dates to different locations around the city. The girls tend to travel from place to place around the city, but thankfully it's easy to find them since their heads are bigger than Jimmy Neutron's. For every girl you can do daily dates, which are dates you can do every day to gain items. You can do normal dates that you have to play through to unlock new ones. These ones are more story driven compared to the daily ones, and there's less of them to complete, so if you ever wanted to speed around a date, this is the one for you. There's a gallery where you can check out the images that you got while dating the girls, and you can even give the girls some gifts! which will help boost their affection towards you. Why that didn't work on Groomy earlier, I'll never know. You can also cook meals and give them to the girls whenever they're hungry. They usually get hungry after every date, so you'll be feeding them quite a lot. I could give them all the food in the entire world, and they'd still be hungry two minutes later. In date mode, you can increase every spirit's favor to 100. You can do this by doing the daily dates and giving them food slash gifts. You can go up to three dates per day with any of the spirits. You can get some pretty good rewards for doing this, so make sure you go the full harem route here. Then there's a the job mechanic in this game. You can work at multiple places, like the accessory shop, doll shop, etc. These jobs tend to last around one hour, but you can skip the waiting if you hand over some materials. By completing a job, you can earn some materials that you can use to make some food or items, and you'll get your stats increased. Finally, my luck will reach plus one! Each job gives you different skill points, so you want to keep switching between jobs instead of just working in the flower shop 24-7 like I did in Persona 5. I really do like the dates in this game. It's nice to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with the love of your life, but not Katori because she's a meanie. This game also gives out tons of daily rewards. These rewards include money, gems, bento, and XP. Who knew all I had to do to grind was open up the game? Just do that 12 more times and I'll reach level 2 in no time! And of course, we have to talk about everyone's favorite part of a gacha game, the summoning. You got your SP summons, your precise summons, your heat summons, and your friendship summons. And last time I tried to do that, I got blocked by everyone on Discord. Let me just say this, the summons in this game can be quite a pain. If you thought I was unlucky before, in this game let's say, hold my bento. Most of the time during summons you'll get some lame stuff like gold. Come on, I don't want to be filthy rich, I want to get a good waifu who I'll probably never use! Summons can cost quite a good amount of diamonds and other materials, so you either have to do a ton of grinding, or spend actual money. <laughs> like, I get it, it's a gacha game, it's luck based, but man, it's just so annoying having to grind and use all that stuff I grinded for, only to get stuff I don't care about. I just want my SS rank Kurumi, is that really too much to ask for? At this point, you might as well just slap me right in the face with a not happening sign.
There's also some other small features like the store where you can buy fragments or spirits, gifts, and clothing. There's a club, but I gotta be level 30 to unlock it. But come on, I don't got time for all that grinding when I could be watching one of those 10 hour Spongebob videos instead. There's also this portal thing, but I gotta be level 28 to unlock it. Man, what's with all these things in this game being locked up? Imagine you weren't allowed in your own room because you aren't level 30 or higher. At least we can change what spirit is on the main menu, so now Kurumi can say RRR to me when I'm feeling frustrated. <laughs> and of course, we can't possibly forget all the special events that happen every month. Now I miss out on a lot of events before in the past, including some crossover events with Hyper Neptunia and Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon. And it turns out, during these events, you can actually acquire specific characters, so I can literally play as Neptune in this game. I never touch a single game in her series, but at least she's here. As always at these events, there are limited time only runs, so if you want to get a spirit evolving around the theme that's occurring, you want to play through the event. Some events even have their own separate story mode, which is freaking awesome. There's also a spirit carnival, where you can walk around a little map of a carnival and see other players across the world. You can play and rest at different spots and go to different buildings to get items and spirits. It's also very laggy in this mode, so it'll be nice to watch a PowerPoint presentation while you're playing. And then there's an the Endless Corridor. In this mode, you fight tons and tons of enemies and bosses, so you can collect the Infinity Stones. Oh wait, sorry, not the stones. I meant to say the shards! That become gems! You also get tons of gold and diamonds. The Endless Corridor has tons of floors to progress through, and every time you reach a certain floor, your reward will get bigger and bigger. Now why do you need these Infinity Gems, you may ask? Well, these gems allow you to awaken your spirit's angel. What this means is basically awakening your spirit's true power, so that they become more powerful in battle. So basically, Yoshino can defeat Goku now. And yeah, that's really all I wanted to say about Daylight Spirit Pledge. My overall thoughts on the game are, it's actually pretty good. Is it perfect? No. But I had a lot of fun with it. The story is enjoyable to play through, the events are awesome, and the gameplay is actually pretty entertaining. The biggest issues I had with the game was the tons and tons of grinding and the crappy RNG mechanics, but I could still look past those issues and appreciate this game for being an actual good game. And if my Kurumi plushie likes the game, then you definitely know it's a great game. So yeah, overall, Daylight Spirit Pledge is a great game that I had a lot of fun with. Heck, I'd even say it's better than the Konosuba game I played a few months ago. Sorry this video took so long to come out, Kurumi. I hope you can forgive me. You'll be sorry you ever decided to mess with me. Yeah, it's still better than eating Cheerios. Rocket fire!